Australian line. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who give you the widest choice of cereals in the whole wide world. All the great grains in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our guest panelist, a very talented young actor who has just finished doing a splendid job on the Arthur Godfrey show. And it's about to leave for Hollywood to do The Darling Buds of May, a new film. Tony Randall. Thank you, Dorothy. It is my privilege to introduce one of the great ladies of television who will return to grace the Broadway stage this season in a play to be called Once More with Feeling with Joseph Cotton, Arlene Francis. <laughs> and now a gentleman who has just returned after spending several days in Atlantic City with Oh, 53 beautiful girls and his beautiful wife, our own Mr. America, Bennett Sir. I'd just like to say a word about those girls in the Miss America contest. They're not only beautiful in bathing suits, but they're <laughs> so charming and wonderful. It makes you kind of proud to see kids from every state in the Union being so very, very nice. And here's a, a clean cut, well, reasonably clean-cut American boy, <laughs> our panel moderator, John Charles Day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I heard Mr. Surf in Atlantic City last night, and we're not speaking. Now, I must say that I, I envied Bennett, his um, assignment last night, until I woke up this morning and realized that outside of the state of Mississippi, his name is mud all over the United States tonight. <laughs> I must say that it's nice to have him on the panel so that we can rub a little of that good old Mississippi mud in his hair and in uh, Miss Kilgallen's and Miss Francis and Mr. Randall's hair, too, because we have some wonderfully nice people and interesting occupations. And we'll, we'll, I think, give Mr. Bennett Surf more trouble than he had last night with all of those lovely young ladies to choose from. We will uh, also have a famous mystery challenger before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after the panel. I've already told you, you have to be blindfolded for our first challenger. Are your blindfolds all in place? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good. Will our first challenger come in and sign in, please? <laughs> As you know, panel, when we ask you to blindfold, we are a little bit concerned that there may be some area of identification which uh, is available to you, which we do not wish to have available to you. And therefore, um, you are asked to blindfold yourselves. It can be a matter of one of you perhaps having seen our guest, or a matter of costuming, or a matter of uh, identification which comes out of old school ties, etc. But we will tell you this. Uh, you are familiar with the scoring system we have here? I am. Uh, we will tell you this after we uh, get through the next step, which is to let everybody in the theater and the folks at home know exactly what our guest line is. What I wanted to tell you was that our guest is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Is there something about your appearance that would make you identifiable to any of us on the panel if we were not blindfolded? 
Uh, yes. Are you uh, part of the sports world? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Well, I kind of hope Miss America was going to be here, but you don't sound like Miss America. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have anything whatever to do with the beauty pageant that just concluded in Atlantic City? I regret to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. X, were you born somewhere other than the United States? I was. Uh, British Isles, perhaps? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Randall. That leaves Australia or New Zealand. No. <laughs> and that leaves you sticking right out in the end of a big fat limb, Tony. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Well, now, uh, one would say from the little we've heard of you that your accent is, is in the uh, is slightly English. We would be correct in assuming that, that our ears are not deceiving us, would we not? I am English. You are English. Uh, are you here as a representative of your government? No. Uh, with our guest permission, if you will permit it, sir, I would say, though not so f officially designated, we would have to consider that any Englishman or uh, Britisher who is here would serve uh, in some degree to be representative of his government if he was not here on pure holiday. Well, what I, I really with meant... Permission, with the permission of your government. Uh -huh. That's right. I use the wrong words. Was that permission or permission? He's here with permission. The permission. <clears throat> uh, is it... Uh, uh, would you have anything to do with uh, being part of the royal party in some way? Well, now, what do you mean by royal party? Well, uh... Are you suggesting... Would you... Yes. Um... <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's a mind reader. <laughs> Actually, I know I that must there, are, uh, there are, I believe, coming to America, or maybe they've already arrived, uh, some of the Grenadier Guards that are at uh, the stationed outside of Buckingham Palace a great deal of the time. That well, is no. what I was referring to. No, no, but they, but they, you... they, they are in the, what do you call that to Royal the Queen? Household. Royal household to the Queen. I mean, is your question, is <laughs> our guest in any way involved with the Royal household? Yes. And it is not your question, is our guest involved specifically as a member of the royal party in transit? I think you're making trouble for me, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I really want to know, is our guest uh, part of the royal household? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Well, I, th I think Arlene opened up a fruitful uh, thought, though. Uh, have you anything to do with the Grenadier Guards? I have. Well, are you the leader of the Grenadier Guards? Not of the whole regiment. <laughs> <laughs> of, the, of the ones that are coming over here. I am. Yes, I think we have to let Bennett have it, and I think Arlene gets a major mistake. <laughs> and you may take off your... Now, I want to show you the bravest man in New York City tonight. I don't know whether you folks around the country know. It's been a sudden day in New York. And Major Johnson has had his uniform and his shako. Is that a shako? It's a bearskin Be cap. Bearskin cap. What is the difference between a bearskin cap and a shako? Shako is much smaller. It's That's not, bigger and hotter? And not worn by the forget of guards. Would you like to take that off? I'm quite happy with it on. Quite happy with it on. And his sword, too. And he came in on stage, and I know it's a very hot uniform, but he is not basically a member of the royal household. That is correct. It's the it's Royal Guard. The Royal Guard. We are household troops, but we are not a member of the Royal Household. Royal Household. May yes. I ask the Major where he does come from, where he was born? Burma. Where? Uh, Burma. 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 He was born in Burma, yes. Oh, interesting. John, might I ask the Major a question? I read in the paper some months ago about one guard who defied tradition and spoke to one of the tourists. Uh, whatever happened to that fellow? Uh, he was... Uh, reprimanded for doing so because it's a very unusual thing to do. <laughs> They're never allowed to speak to anybody, are they? No, they are not. But he was forgiven. He was. There was provocation, wasn't there? There was a great deal of provocation on that occasion. Well, actually, as you all know, Major Johnson, I think actually Arlene made the point, is here with the Grenadier, Grenadier Guards and they're appear, appearing in the uh, garden here in New York City. 
But I think more interesting is that uh, Major Johnson, who has certainly a, a uniform which uh, does him credit and does the great guards of which he's a member of credit, is a career officer. And he saw a great deal of action during World War II, and he commanded a tank battalion, not in this uniform, but in a good fighting guardsman's uniform, and it's one of the great regiments of all time. Uh, I have a small bit of English background, and I must say that I've always wanted to be. When I was a youngster, I always wanted to be a grenadier guardsman. I never made it. You did, sir. Congratulations to you. Thank you. congratulate you. We flipped all the cards there because it's meet and proper that they should have been flipped. Now let's see what you can do with a second challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Helen Straub, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Miss? Miss Straub, and where are you from? Pee Wee Valley, Kentucky. Pee Wee Valley, Kentucky? <laughs> Golly, you know, you could wait for years and never come in. And, well, there it is. <laughs> Miss Straub, the panel. Panel, Miss Straub, will you come in over here, please? And uh, yes. tell me whether you are familiar with our scorekeeping. Yes, system. I am. All right, if you know how to keep score, there's nothing left to be done before we get down to the game, except to let our friends here in the theater and the audience and the folks at home know exactly what your line is. That panel, Ms. Straub, is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Tony Randall. You're self-employed? That's correct. What do people do in Pee Wee Valley? <laughs> <laughs> you deal with men and women? Yes. The way you said yes made me think that perhaps with one more than the other. No. Yes. <laughs> Very good, Tony. One down and nine to go, Miss French. That's all right. No. <laughs> uh, you deal in services, do you? Yes, I do. Uh, do you go to the people that want your services? Yes, I do. Uh, do they call you for your services? Yes. I do would like here, if I may, with your permission, to say that in this particular area, it would not be impossible that people would come in the same term of reference to get this service. In this particular instance, actually, uh, Ms. Straub does go to give it, but uh -huh. they could, in the same general area, come to get it. You Thank confused, you, John. Dear? The Grenadier Guard. Huh? Yeah, the Grenadier right. Guard, that's right. Uh, do you go into the homes rather than into office buildings to do your job? Not necessarily. Small conference is now necessary. <laughs> Anything you'd like to say? I mean, while we're having this conversation. <laughs> you read you know, any new you books put lately? about um, another two pinches of salt in it, it'll be an entirely different I taste. Oh, 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 pardon me. All yes. that conversation, I'm going to get a no. <laughs> uh, no, I would think that, to be fair, we would have to say that there are circumstances under which it might be equally one or the other. I see. Thank you, John. Do you do something inside the house for the people that live there? Yes. Is uh, what you do, does it have anything entertaining about it at all? Well, I hope so. Uh, do you work uh, with children in any way? No, when you, you mean here, work with children? Do you children? work with them by that? I mean, do you entertain them in any way? Would, would children be amused or entertained by what you do? If they were around, yes. <laughs> No house is complete without them. Uh, would people have you in if they were giving a party of some kind? They might. Uh, would you classify yourself as an entertainer? Yes. You classify yourself as an entertainer that goes to parties 
And then it's eggs. Well, there you are. I've won. <laughs> Seven down and 94 to go. Could we have a conference for a minute? You may have one minute for a conference. What, what, where do we go from there? Well, well could she, it eggs. must be something specific that she does. Uh, for, see if she has anything to do with music, like one of those. Oh, I see. Oh, 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 right. What about those, those people? It's usually a man. Uh, I don't want to give you a bum steer twice in one night, Arlene. That's but you know the right, ones Arlene. who call out for square dances? Yes, you know. I know them. Well, we valid. Would that be anything? Yes. Kind of I'm going to let you have that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Arlene, right, what was the in, what was the, the? I just want may I, I'll go on now. What Shall was I? the inflection there? Call out the square dances. That was that was what Miss Dorothy ah, suggested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to trap me, John? No. Huh? <laughs> do you use anything other than your own self for the work that you do when you are entertaining? Yes, I do. Uh, would you use uh, puppets of any kind in your work? No. Two down a day to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Straub, uh, is there any music of any kind used in the entertaining that you do? Yes. Well, I'm going to, I think Dorothy's on the right track. Watch so, out, uh, Bennett. I'm so I am, I am, I'm going to pass to Dorothy because <laughs> if, she's, if, if she's right, I wanted to get the credit. <laughs> oh, Bennett, but I, I'm sure I'm wrong. I'm, I've well, been wrong all evening. Only $5. Uh, Take a chance. <laughs> do you use your voice in what you do, Miss Straub? Yes, I do. No, wait. <laughs> yes, you do use your voice. Yes, I'm sorry, Dorothy. I, I don't want to mislead you. Oh. Uh, is the music that is associated with you what we would call country music no. or folk music? No, I don't think we could call it country or folk music. I'm sorry. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Randall. You work not alone. Correct? <laughs> do you work... Do you use something what? other than yourself when you work? With somebody other? No, I said, do you use something other than yourself when you work? When what you work. What do you have in mind when you speak of something other than something yourself? Something other living. Some other living thing? Yes. That's fine. Four down and six to go, <laughs> Mr. Do you yourself play a musical instrument? No. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Uh... Is there any kind of magic or tricks connected with the act that you do? I would say this, that what Miss Straub does might, under very general description, be concerned with no. magic or trickery or ledger domain or such application as you might like to make of the English language to something which you didn't quite understand while it was being done. <laughs> We missed you in Atlantic City, John. <laughs> well, may I ask, is, does hypnotism play any part in the job that you do? Bennett, no. you've been in Atlantic City too long. That's <laughs> six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. I'm going to give you one more minute. I'd like to get back to this music. Uh, does it accompany something? Is it background for something? Yes. Uh, does anyone, including yourself, move about to this music? No. That's no. seven down and three to go, Mr. Randall. That leaves singing. <laughs> Do you sing the music? No, I don't. That's eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> Would you be considered in any way a, a, a mind reader or a spiritualist? I have a choice there, haven't I? Mm -hmm. Would you be considered one of those? You want to take... What, you oh, you want to be I, more specific, no, you well, can. may I not be more specific? No, may, you don't have to may be. May I just say, are you one or the other of those? You want to leave them both there on the table. And they're both not. They're and both no, you, and, and they the are on the table. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. Well, the last chance. Have you, have, have you anything to do with regional or folk music? No, I haven't. Ten that. down and no more I to go, problems. and Miss Straub <laughs> is a professional fire eater. Oh. <laughs> she goes to people's goes houses to, and puts out fires. Be, and puts out fires. By That's eating it. them. That's sure. a better way. Now, actually, this is why I tried to tell you that actually Miss Chubb does go to private parties. And, uh, he tried to tell us. At the same time, <laughs> people do come and eat fire and watch her eat fire. But does the you fire know? make music as it goes inside? Where does the music well, you come play in? It. You've heard the fire music. Who plays the music? Well, I usually have a recording of smoke that's in your eyes, or I don't want to set the world on fire. <laughs> have you got oh, any 
Any with you you could eat for us? No. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Straub, thank you very much for puzzling the panel completely. This we always like to do. Thank you. Nice to have had you on What's My Life. Good night. And now, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our alternate... And now we come to the uh, special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which, once again, I ask my friends on the panel to put on their blindfolds. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, you go to a different form of questioning. You will ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you a curvaceous cutie? Oh, I certainly hope so. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Randall? I know your voice. I think I'd better disqualify myself. Oh, so, oh, Miss Francis. We'll need you. The last time you asked me to your house for dinner, did you call up and tell me to bring a pound That'll of butter? That'll be all, Mr. Randall, Miss Francis. <laughs> Couldn't even have the answer to that. <coughs> Sounds like a beautiful relationship. Um, that was a legitimate question. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Did you get an answer? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. What Could was you your repeat, question? <laughs> the last time you, you asked me... You disqualified yourself, Mr. Randall, I I'm believe. I'm awfully confused. Didn't he, he disqualify himself? He disqualified himself. himself. Please, Mr. Randall, would you keep quiet? <laughs> Thank you, Miss Francis. Well, are you in the entertainment world? I've given some of the best years of my life. <laughs> uh, are you a star of a picture that is currently playing in one of the big Broadway movie houses? No, I am not. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you sing? I have quite a lovely voice if given a chance, yes. <laughs> are you still with it? No, I don't know. Out. Am I? He's am out. I there? He's out. Mr. Randall, did you disqualify yourself? I thought I did, but I thought you disqualified my disqualification. <laughs> <laughs> Let me review this whole business. No, I didn't, Miss Francis. Uh, are you at the present time making a picture in New York City? Don't hear a thing. They've just changed location spots. <laughs> <laughs> I am here, and I'm doing some shopping, too, while I'm here, making the movie. Well, <laughs> Mr. Sir, sure. but you are making a picture yes. here? Yes, I will on the side, yes. Is it a picture that is going to be in the sort of a mystery or espionage area? Yes, I believe so, with a little romance in there, yes. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, is it being directed by Alfred Hitchcock? By whom? Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock? Oh, yes. Is it being directed by Alfred Hitchcock? Yes, you are so right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Mr. Dorothy Randall, has Randall, you it. disqualified yourself, Miss Francis. Uh, not only directed by Alfred Hitchcock, but co-starring Cary Grant. Is it the award winner, Eva Marie Saint? <laughs> it is that. <laughs> And I will say again, uh, here is an area where actually Miss Eva Marie Saint, who is really Mrs. Hayden, right? Yes, thank you. Is making a picture that um, is um, being made in New York, and it's something that New Yorkers will be going home on the train off. So I looked and said, what's happening down there? And they're making a picture, and it's north by... North, um, north by Northwest. North by Northwest. An MGM picture. MGM picture. Written by Ernest Lehman. But if you're going to be in it, it's going to be good. Thank you. Because you have a wonderful talent. It's a very great talent. You know, someone been... told me tonight that Tony was going to be on the panel, yeah. and I said backstage, I said, he knows me, he knows everything about me, he knows all the voices. <laughs> and he disqualified himself. <laughs> yes, I knew he would know. Oh. Well, Miss Eva, thank you for thank being you our so guest. Much. Wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for the panel.
Well, you've done well tonight, panel. Congratulations. And we'll be back after this word from... And Tony Randall, it's nice to have had you back with us again on that happy note. This is John Diddy saying good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night and happy Hollywood, John. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Tony. Good night, Bennett, dear. Good night. Good night, John. Good night, Judge. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. And thanks for being with us on What's My Line. If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line. CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. This has been a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten. <laughs>